One of the biggest costs when it comes to owning a scooter, which of course is much more affordable than either a motorcycle or a car, is the insurance. Now Simon, you're an insurance professional. Are there any special issues or problems with scooter insurance? Yeah, scooter insurance, a bit similar to bike insurance, big, big problem for the industry as a whole is theft insurance. A couple of years ago, it's got slightly better now, but a couple of years ago, something like 60% of all bikes that were being insured were being stolen. That's scooters, that's, yeah. That's scooters, yeah. Uh, reason being, they're very light, they can go back into in the back of a transit van, a uh, big problem for insurance companies. If somebody's got a lot of experience in a car or a bike, does that make any difference uh, to their insurance? What we're finding nowadays is a lot of, lot of experienced bikers who may have a Blade or an R1 um, are now actually turning to scooters for a, a form of um, commuting. Yeah. So those people obviously present a completely different risk to the younger people in the marketplace who actually aren't bikers but find uh, scooters a very affordable way of commuting. They present different problems because they've got no experience. Compare that to someone who's ride, ridden a Blade or an R1 or just been biking for a number of years, completely different risks. So the, the older guy with a bigger scooter, not a problem. The younger guys, it's going to cost them a bit more. Insurance is a bit dull, but everyone would agree you need it. When it comes to training, though, opinions are mixed. The scooters, they're relatively low-powered, they're twist and go. How much training do you need? I do agree that perhaps a little bit more training could be incorporated into it. Uh, perhaps a little bit more publicity to try and encourage more into actually doing the training and actually getting onto the scooters, especially the uh, born again bikers. But I also believe that uh, car drivers, lorry drivers, etc., should be better educated in watching out for, for two wheel users. Reason being, I know several driving instructors myself and when they're teaching people, when they come into road ends, things like that, they say, is there any cars, buses, etc. coming? They never ever mention motorcycles and it's something that really ought to be picked up on. Really, they ought to be a lot better educated, the four-wheel users. Well, that would help, but there are still a lot of riders out there who can't see the dangers that are involved in any two-wheel vehicle, no matter how small. The feeling really with sort of scooters is that people go on, jump on them, do a CBT, quite happily then will sort of fly around all over the, you know, the road with unknown dangers approaching them. Uh, I feel it's a case of now we need to take people on to try and improve safety for all the two wheel road user. Um, in particular you've got the sort of 16, 17 year olds who don't appear to have any sort of sense of danger. They will go out there, they'll sort of think it's nothing wrong without putting any form of protection whatsoever. And I think, you know, it's hard reality if suddenly they see the loss of toes, bare skin, down to bone or whatever you want to say, that, you know, that they're going to end up with. Um, I feel there's a need that we should be taking people on, whether it be a formulated government run scheme or something like ourselves, whereby we will take people out and try and point out to them dangers that are on the road, giving them advance, you know, looking down the road further, seeing the dangers before they actually get to a situation that they can't react to.